Hello, welcome to The Trues, I'm Russell Brand, host of The Trues. Subscribe here, subscribe here to Trues, true news, true news, true news. Today's Trues focuses on events in Ottawa, in Canada, and the recent violent actions that were, have taken place there. How does this relate to a broader international narrative? Are we being told the truth by conventional media? Let's have a look for some true news. These are two attacks in just two days in Canada. Uh, first of all, two people rammed down uh, in Quebec, two soldiers. One of them died. Uh, the attacker was later killed by police. Now what we're seeing in Ottawa is Parliament in lockdown. A shooter, a gunman opening fire first at the War Memorial and then in Parliament so far the only facts we have is that there's been two incidents of violence in a place that you're not used to hearing violence from. So that's really all we know so far. The city is in lockdown and Ottawa, normally not much news comes out of Ottawa. But on the bright side, some news out of Ottawa. But of course it is a Canadian capital and Canada has been getting involved with the effort to combat the Islamic State group. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Just throw that in. And uh, Islamic State group. Initially, we're given the information there's been two acts of violence. Now, Islam Islamic State is being mentioned, but at the moment, I don't know how that connection has been made. I don't know. I just heard it on the news. My fellow Canadians. What is this standing between flags business? Like, uh, Cameron was doing it a little while ago. I don't like leaders standing between flags like they're sort of bewinged angels of justice. For the second time this week there has been a brutal and violent attack on our soil. Interesting, on the soil. Today our thoughts and prayers are with the family and friends of Corporal Nathan Cirillo of the Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders. Corporal Cirillo was killed today, murdered in cold blood, it's quite evocative language that's being used here. This doesn't seem like... It was interesting, is this speech has an agenda. There's an intention behind it. That's not informational language, is it? Because like, if you look at Stephen Harper there, and I've been to Canada, they ate him. Uh, he's, I don't know how he gets to be leader, it's probably because democracy don't work properly. You can tell that he's leading you somewhere with this, like the, his uh, use of the militaristic titles, the use of the phrase, in cold blood. I mean, that's like an interesting, like, you don't know what mood people are in when they do a murder. Oh, it's like cold blood. They, they could have been in a frantic state of febrile passion, for all we know. This is an attempt to to editorialise and present the information, but to help us reach what conclusion, Mr Harper? As he provided a ceremonial honour guard at Canada's National War Memorial. That sacred place that pays tribute to those who gave their lives so that we can live in a free, democratic and safe society. Yeah, I don't know, Steve. I don't know if, we, if the function of the military is for the domestic population to live in a safe and free democratic society. That sounds like a presumption that might need some analysis. It seems well, like what I think is to preserve the interests of powerful groups of people at the top of society and to prevent any dialogue occurring that could shift that paradigm in any way. But like, fair enough, Steve, you're doing a speech, carry on. Likewise, our thoughts and prayers remain also with the family and friends of Warrant Officer Patrice Vincent, who was killed earlier this week by an ISIL-inspired terrorist. Hold on a minute, you don't know what's inspiring a person. Like, like that's, a, that's a massive assumption. Fellow Canadians, in the days to come, we will learn more about the terrorist and any accomplices he may have had. Yeah, perhaps shut up till then, then, maybe. We are also reminded that attacks on our security personnel and on our institutions of governance are, by their very nature, attacks on our country, on our values, on our society, on us Canadians. It's interesting, like, that what he's telling you is how to think. You know, oh, what should I think of this act of violence? Well, let there be no doubt there's an attack on our Canadian values and our freedom. That's a very uh, familiar and recognisable type of speech, isn't it? When these things happen, it's an attack on all of us. Is it? Is it really? Are those institutions protecting all of us? I know that's what you're saying, but I mean, where's the evidence, Steve? But let there be no misunderstanding. We will not be intimidated. Canada will never be intimidated. <laughs> Weird thing to say about Canada. Yeah, don't let Canada be... How can Canada be intimidated? It's only some earth and a flag. How's that earth and flag? Well, it looks pretty confident, actually. It's not intimidating, is it? Well, no, because, you know, it's a land mass and some fabric with a leaf on it and you can't really intimidate that. That's a very simplistic and emotive type of language to apply to a concept. In fact, this will lead us to strengthen our resolve and redouble our efforts and those of our national security agencies 
The code there is we're giving more power to the military and government institutions and we'll use that power how we want to because you're under threat and we don't want Canada to be intimidated. Hey, I want to be free to do a Do you want Canada to be intimidated? Look at that flag. Can you imagine it being all intimidated, all listless? I don't want that. Right, give us your computer. To take all necessary steps to identify and counter threats and keep Canada safe here at home. The other important thing is, is that we keep mentioning Islamic State and ISIL. Why is he mentioning that? Because they so far all they know is that one fella, they said, was a jihadist sympathiser and the other person is a newly converted Muslim or a recent Muslim convert. But also, the guy that's a recent Muslim convert also has mental health issues. If you met a person and like you're having a cup of tea with them and they go, and you go, tell me about yourself. Oh, I recently converted to Islam, did you? Yeah, also I've got mental health issues. And then a minute later, like, start smashing the plates up. I'd go, is that Islam you're doing that for? Okay, you said he said he mentally ill a minute ago. Mate, you're mentally ill, stop smashing the plates up. Is this in the Quran? Does it say stuff about smashing the plates up? Are you in ISIL? Right, it's convenient for their argument. Just as it will lead us to strengthen our resolve and redouble our efforts to work with our allies around the world and fight against the terrorist organizations who brutalize those in other countries with the hope of bringing their savagery to our shores. Brutalise other countries, hope of bringing their savagery to our shores. I wonder how people in the Middle East feel about the constant occupation of Western forces supporting industries and corporations over there that benefit from their resources. They will have no safe haven. What's interesting about that is that a lot of what Steve Harper says sounds very reasonable. We think, yeah, there's been an attack on an institution, there's been an attack on uh, military personnel, that's wrong, that's wrong that, that, that that's happened. But it's what happens to that information, what the, how that information is used that's interesting. Because a fellow called Justin Bork shot and killed three Canadian mounted police officers in Moncton, New Brunswick. And that, that was in June. And when that happened, no mention of terror was made. Although the, the murders themselves bore the hallmarks of a conservative and conspir conspiratorial anti-state worldview, reminiscent of Norwegian killer Anders Breivik. What's interesting is when a murder like that happens, though, which is relatively recent in Canadian history, that isn't a useful murder. That murder is an attack again on mounted police, institutional figures. It's out of nowhere. You don't go on the news there and go, right, we've got to watch out for white people that are inspired by an individualistic, materialistic corporate culture that's nihilistic and selfish and greedy because that isn't convenient to the objectives of the Canadian government and the Canadian government's allies. They're part of a broader theme, a broader narrative. What's important is how are these murders used to advance an argument? Let's see what Barack Obama is saying. He's jumping on the bandwagon. And it's... Uh... You know, very important, I think, for us to recognize that um, when it comes to dealing with terrorist activity, that it, uh, Canada and the United States uh, has to be entirely in sync. No, not when it comes to dealing with terrorist activity. When it comes to dealing with our business interests abroad, when it comes to dealing with an accepted narrative of enforcing government power on a domestic population and supporting corporate power abroad, it's important that the USA and Canada and the transnational corporate-led and dominated world speak cohesively. That's why it don't matter if a white geezer kills three Mounties, but it does matter if a recent Muslim convert shoots a member of the Canadian services. We have in the past. I'm confident we will continue to do so in the future. Barack Obama, let's face it, he ain't the same guy anymore, is he? Look at him. Look, I... I'm sorry. Yes, we can change. I'm very, very tired. Look at his face. He's letting like me wrung out. I believe we can make a better America. I oh, look at me. I'm a black guy. I'm the president now. It's all gonna be right. Look at my kids and that. Look at my missus. It's all gonna be cool. Oh, fucking hell. Look, just go over there. Get as much oil as you can. It's to do with Islam and Muslims and I see what I think I'm knackered. For fuck's sake, I've only got a couple more months in a job. Just let me get through this. So, obviously we're all shaken by it. Did you care about the free mountains? No, I won't show it, but that's not, not useful to the broader narrative of uh, our requirements abroad and domestically to impose control on our populations. Shoot as many mounties if you want, if you're white. Drive a car where you want if you're white. Don't be a bloody Muslim, though, and do it, because then we will use that to our advantage. Uh, this obviously is something that we'll make sure to factor in in the ongoing efforts uh, that we have to counter terrorist attacks. <laughs> it's even strapping here. No info yet 
Yeah, but it's definitely to do with it's to do with Islam, isn't it? Probably this. I mean, it would be good if it was. It'd be enough being convenient. Do you remember when that Oklahoma bomber Tim McVeigh blew out? Oh, there's been a bombing. Oh, he's blown up that building. It was a white bloke. Oh, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Soon a brown person will do something, and then we can have our wars. There are a lot of possible threats that uh, are foiled or disrupted. Uh, that don't always get reported on. So, like, just to let you know that these are not the mad rants of a paranoid lunatic, well, they might be, but they also happen to be true. After 9 11, the Patriot Act in America extended state surveillance powers. So that's what they do. And remember in Steve Harper in his speech, we, Canada cannot be intimidated. Keep that flag all glossy and stiff and pert. Like, you know, they're going to use it to impose new legislation that means that they'll be able to spy on domestic population and to advance aggression in the Middle East to further their own business interests. That's what will happen. That's what happened here. Uh, after 9 11, in Guantanamo Bay, inmates were tortured and held without charges. Make no mistake about it, said George W. Bush in 2005. This is a war against people who profess an ideology and they use terror as a means to achieve their objectives. That's him! He's the person! It's a war against people who profess an ideology. Yeah, capitalism, consumerism, neoliberalism, and we use terror as a means to achieve their objectives. If that terror fits in with the, our template, we will use that terror. It's incredible. I think George W. Bush was perhaps some sort of brilliant existentialist poet. Riddle me this! Who? is a terrorist. Here's our own Theresa May now in front of a disturbing map of Britain made out of Union Jacks. But it's ridiculous that the British government should have to go to such lengths to get rid of dangerous foreigners. Oh, Theresa, no, don't say dangerous foreigners. Dangerous foreigners coming over here Stealing our jobs and women. You're not actually a politician. Hasn't it gone through, isn't there like a filtration process? Like me, I'm a comedian. People go, don't ever say that on the telly, Russell, you idiot. That person's got a really good job. She's saying dangerous foreigners on the telly. In the UK, how, our reaction to the 2005 London bombings, Tony Blair, who was the leader then, we now know that what he was secretly doing was waiting to work for a Kazakhstan dictator and take up a job for Q80 oil companies. He said, let no one be in doubt. After 2005, he said, let no one be in doubt. The rules of the game of change. Is it a game? Well, yeah, to me it is. It's a game where I get to have a bloody good job quite soon. That's why the next Conservative manifesto will promise to scrap the Human Rights Act. I mean, who among us What's a Human Rights Act? Is it, can you think of anyone you know that might be affected by a Human Rights Act? Human Rights Act, that's going to have an impact on us. How, how can someone stand on a stage saying things like, uh, get rid of foreigners and we get rid of human rights and maintain a job and a tartan jacket? If leaving the European Convention is what it takes to fix our human rights laws, that is what we should do. The important news uh, that's the true news, because this is the truth, subscribe here. The true news behind this is like during these events, share prices are soaring in America for those who produce coalition bombs and missiles and drones and aircraft participating in the latest war. That's an amazing piece of news. Legislation has been put through in our, co in, in our country, what's it called? The Snoopers Charter. You know, like where it's like, oh, we've got to spy on you for your safety. Whenever they do that data capture stuff, like what, you've been spying on our Facebook accounts? What, you're looking at our emails? We're doing that. To help you, we was going to organise you a birthday party and you spoiled it. They scare us, then rip us off the whole time. Last month, US warships fired 65.8 million worth of Tomahawk missiles within just 24 hours. If we spent that much on Ebola cures, there'd be no more Ebola. They fired an Ebola cure in one day from a warship. Excuse me, we've got Ebola. Shut up. <laughs> The government will soon publish the Immigration Bill, which will make it easier to get rid of people with no right to be here. Yeah, get rid of people with no right to be here. What do you mean, like companies like Vodafone and Starbucks and Amazon and Google that come over here and use our resources and taxpayers, uh, the taxpayers' resources with workers that have been educated at our expense? No, I meant people who are slightly different. First, we're going to cut the number of appeal rights. Right, fuck off! May I appeal? No! <laughs> I've told you before, I've been to a place where asylum seekers, illegal asylum seekers, get food, legal device and medicine. While I was there, I wasn't like, honestly, as a human being, go there yourself, check these places out. You don't think like, 
You bastard, you're having a time of your life here, aren't you? In this undignified line for the most basic human resources. It makes you feel like, shit, we're all human beings. Let's find a way to reach out to one another, to help one another. And if that means that corporations make a bit less profit from illegal wars overseas, then so be it. Why are we bombing in Syria? Oh, we've got to help the Syrians. There's some Syrians who want to come and live here. You've got no right. May I appeal? Fuck off. I've got Ebola. <laughs> Sorry, we just fired a cure abroad. What's happening is the, in the incidents in Ottawa are being used to advance a narrative that will not only entitle them to further wars abroad, but will entitle them to inhibit our freedoms. That is the true news. That is the true news. Subscribe here to True News. Nose is a tool that is abused to fool you and to leave you scared and confused. Truth is like the news. If the news was true, I want some truths. Let's have some truths.